Lighthouse is a non-denominational church located just a few miles from Glasgow, Kentucky on the Edmonton Road. The Shepherd's House family invites you to Bible study on Sunday at 9 a.m., worship service at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, and the Sunday evening service at 6 p.m. Midweek service at the Shepherd's House is Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Shepherd's House family cordially invites you to any of these services. service uh, that uh, have your Bibles that like to join along with us. We'll have the scripture on the Word of God, on, of the Word of God, excuse me, on the screen here in just a little bit uh, for you to read along that way for those of you that are watching my television at home or even some of you that's here in the church service today. Um, and I want to encourage those, again, we're trying to modernize um, our uh, our um, abilities for you to make donations when the Holy Spirit leads you to do so. And uh, we now have the capability of taking your donation by credit card or by debit card uh, over the telephone as well as on the website if you want to do that if the Lord leads you to. I'm not going to spend much time on that right now. But anyway, in St. John's Gospel, I'd like for you to, uh, to read along with me. And I, I want to say this before I read the scripture. I, I want to encourage all of you that have prayer requests. I want you to know that those of you that have called in because of prayer requests, uh, most of the time I'll pray with you over the telephone, and then we'll take that in front of the church. And Wednesday night we had some folks that called in on Monday night from Chicago. We took those needs right before the church right before the Lord, and we had prayer because of those who called in from the Chicago area, and those who called in on Thursday night, and on Sunday morning, we take that on Sunday morning, right before uh, the congregation, we have special prayer for the people that calls in on uh, Thursday night and Sunday night that's viewing this in the Kentucky, Tennessee area. So wherever you're viewing this, if you've got a prayer request, we take that prayer request very seriously. In fact, this last Wednesday night, the Lord reminded me uh, while we were having prayer that I'd forgotten to mention anything about it. So before we got started into the rest of the service, I stopped everything that we were doing, and I said, we're going to have special prayer right now uh, on behalf of those who called in Monday night from Chicago, and I told the congregation the need. We had special prayer just like I promised them that we were going to. I take it very seriously, and if I forget it, don't worry. The Holy Spirit will sure remind me of it, and I want him to. Amen? I don't ever, ever, ever want to tell somebody that I'll pray for you and then not do it. Amen? That's a bad practice to start. I don't ever want to do that intentionally. Uh, so anyway, we take your prayer requests very seriously, and uh, we will be glad to pray with you, and especially if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I can't pray your prayer for you, but I can, help, I can pray with you and help you get started, but you'll have to pray your own prayer. You need to get saved if you're lost before this thing runs out, and I believe all of us can agree by the signs of the times and by what we see happening on the news and what we see happening right around us, no doubt it's got to be getting closer than it's ever been before. I'm telling you, just from the people that's called in with prayer requests and the prayer requests from people here at the church and folks within our church that are sick, even some sitting in the congregation here that are struggling over health issues and going through things, we take all of those things seriously and we also know that this is a sign of the times, amen, that the sickness is out there today. The spirit of infirmity is across the land today like we have never saw it before. But I know that the Word says that by His stripes we are healed. And we're going to pray. We're going to believe. There's not anything that we can do because we do not have the ability and the power to heal. But Jesus does when we call upon Him in the name of the Lord with faith and believing by His stripes we are healed. Healed. So I want to be able to give encouragement to you and uh, give God honor and praise. Just give Him praise for being such a good God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise His name. All right, let's get into the Word right now. In St. John's Gospel, chapter number 6, verse number 28. And he reads like this. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? 
Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which he hath sent me, that all of which he hath given me, I, would, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Now let's go into Second Peter, chapter number 3. 2 Peter, chapter number 3. The Word of God says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Acts chapter number 2, verse number 21 says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, we come before you once again this day, thanking you, Lord, for being such a good God, thanking you, Lord, for hearing and answering prayer, thanking you for always being there to meet every need that we have. Father, asking for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to fall upon us today. Father, asking you to bless and to move in a powerful way. Father, we know that you're great and you're mighty. Father, we know that there's not anything, Lord, that you cannot do. Father, we know that all things are possible through you. Asking you, Father, to use us, to hide us behind the shadow of the cross, that no glory would come to me in the flesh, but, Father, that the name of Jesus might be uplifted for now and forevermore. Thanking you, Lord, for your mercy. Thanking you, Father, for your grace and love. And asking you, Father, to move in a mighty and a powerful way. Father, I ask you to touch and to bless because it's all in Jesus' name that we ask this day. Asking you to move, our Father, on every heart, every need, every thought, Lord, our Father, that's pertaining to a need that they need a heavenly blessing from. I pray, God, that you would move and bless, and we bind every spirit, Lord, that would come against this ministry, every spirit that's coming against those that's watching my television, no matter what area they might live in, 
that has the spirit of infirmity on their body. I rebuke that right now through the authority of the word of God and in the name of Jesus. And Father, I ask for favor and blessings, Lord, to be bestowed upon every one. Father, that believes upon every one right now, Father, if they're here at the Shepherd's House Church, or if they're watching by television in their living room or their recliner or in their bedroom on Sunday morning, wherever it is, Lord, I pray right now they would just be able to lift up their hand and pray and believe with faith and receive from heaven, Lord, on behalf of this need that they have. Father, I know that it's not your will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And Father, I know the word says that by your stripes, we are healed. And I'm claiming and believing, Father, for healing. And Father, I bind every spirit, Lord, that's coming against relationship problems of people that's watching this program at home and people that are here at the Shepherd's House Church. This morning, Lord, as we're recording this program, I pray, dear God, that you would just move, Lord, on behalf of relationship problems and relationship needs. Father, I pray for every ministry, Lord. Father, Lord, that uh, uh, viewing this uh, and watching this uh, that's connected with this and every person that's sending in money. Uh, Father Lord that's uh, behind and supporting this program I pray for favor and blessings to be bestowed upon them Father whether they're giving a little or whether they're giving a lot. I pray God that you would bless them Father in a mighty way and Father we pray God that every spirit that's coming against them Lord may be bound in the name of Jesus and through the authority of your word I pray this day you would loose them and let them go that their finances would be blessed uh, that their bodies might be healed uh, father that their loss might be saved uh, that the broken uh, father might be healed uh, and father those that are discouraged and depressed uh, father that spirit of depression and that spirit of anxiety I bind it in the name of Jesus uh, and through the authority of your word uh, father I ask you to release blessings uh, and faith right now that every person might feel the presence of the Holy Ghost Lord Father upon them right now Lord and asking you Father to touch them and we ask you to bless them mightily in every area and that they will never be the same after this day because they believe and they we've asking this in Jesus name amen hallelujah well, glory. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shout. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful. Uh, amen. For the presence of God. Uh, I'm thankful. Uh, amen. For the ability. Uh, amen. To be healed. Uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the stripes, amen, on his back. And I'm thankful today that Jesus gave us authority to bind every spirit, amen, that comes against us in the name of Jesus because he gave us that authority. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take that authority, amen, put the devil under my feet, amen, step on his head, amen, squish him, amen, under my foot, amen, and shout, amen, the praises of God, amen, because of me have to go through some things, uh, but the Lord's going to be with me through everything. The Word of God says, Lo, I'll be with you always, uh, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I know there's a lot of people today that are going through things today. Amen. There's been a lot of times uh, I said instead of having prayer requests, uh, I might just ought to ask how many can't think of any reason to pray. Lift your hand. We'll pray for the rest of them. That's pretty much, uh, amen, the way that it's been a lot of times, uh, amen, because of things, uh, amen, that are happening today. And I'm just going to go ahead and say this. Uh, I don't mean to get right in the middle of your uh, salad uh, and pick all the onions and the cucumbers out of it, but I'm going to just get in here and preach to you today. Amen. The reason why, amen, a lot of times uh, we face the things that we're facing is because that we don't believe. Now, Jesus said, in his word, if we have the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, it shall be plucked up and cast into the sea. Wow, isn't it wonderful that he said faith the size of a grain of mustard seed instead of telling us we had to have faith the size of a mountain. Most of us struggles to have the faith the size of a mustard seed. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, some of you that were here in early service this morning heard me bring this part out. And it's not because I'm repeating myself. It's just that you need to hear it again. And all of those who wasn't here need to hear it for the first time. 
Amen. We need to have faith. And, and faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We need to get our head in the Word uh, and read His Word uh, and not spend all of our time, uh, amen, reading books, uh, amen, by whoever. People spend more time, amen, reading books like Antlers in a Tree Top by Bruce the Moose. Amen. Amen. Instead of listening, uh, amen, to the Word of God, uh, amen, and reading the Word of God. Now, I got that from a friend of mine I went to school with down in Allen County years ago. We're supposed to give a book report and tell what the name of the book was, uh, amen, that we read uh, and who the author was. This young man, a good friend of mine, I'm not going to call his name because he's probably watching the program, uh, and everybody told what book they, wrote, they read, uh, and he said, uh, my book was Antlers in a Treetop, and the author was Bruce the Moose. Amen. So you don't need to be reading that. Amen. We need the Word of God. It's the Word of God, amen, that gives us power and gives us victory, gives us understanding, and it builds up the faith, amen, where the devil tries to steal our faith, amen, where others sometimes, amen, will water down our faith, amen, when we're on fire. Now, Third Day has got a good song out right now, Soul on Fire. I love that song, and I think about that song, how great that it is and you ought to see it on video. You can go to YouTube and watch that third day, their new song, Soul on Fire. Man, it's a wonderful video, and it's free on YouTube. I thought I'd just pass it out there, amen, for some of you that might want to watch that. And when I visualize that in my mind, Soul on Fire, I think about the devil behind that, amen, with a water hose trying to say, I'm going to put your fire out. Amen. Don't you get on fire and don't you believe I'm going to water you down. Amen. But if we stay close to God and read the Word of God, it keeps on building the fire that it's so great. You can turn a water hose on it and it'll lick up every bit of the water. Amen. Sizzle it, dry it up, evaporate it, and it's gone. It's the faith that we have in God and building that faith. Amen. That we have in God. Amen. That we can just dare to believe and simply know within everything in our heart that God is going to do this, uh, amen, then we can overcome the things that we're challenged with. But I see many people, amen, that don't have victory in this day and time, and they're struggling over issues, uh, amen. Number one, they don't take authority over the things that they got. When I come down with a cold, I rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus. I may have to blow my nose. I may sneeze a few times, but I tell that cold, uh, you come by, but you came to pass. Just get on out of here. I'm not going to receive it. I, I'm not going to put up with it. I, I may have to sneeze a time or two, but I'm going to overcome this in the name of Jesus and I overcome it because I believe, really do believe in my heart that it's going to soon be gone. And you know what? It don't stay very long. I don't drag it around for months. Amen. I don't miss church at all because of it. I don't miss a preaching appointment. Amen. Because of it. I, I just rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Say, we need to take that authority. Amen. That we've got and many people today has problems believing because they think it's because of the other person. They can do that because they probably got more faith than I can. Amen. Don't say yourself too short. Remember, all you got to have is faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. A grain of mustard seed is so small, it's hard to even see with the human eye. Little bitty feller. Amen. That's all that you have to have. Little bitty speck. Amen. What does that put us in? It puts our perspective sometimes in realizing how little of faith that we really do have. And how much we need to have a small measure of faith. Amen. How many knows that a penny is a whole lot better than having a, a rock? Amen. A penny won't buy you a whole lot. But I'll guarantee you it'll buy you a whole lot more than a rock will. Or a piece of dirt. Amen. Or a fish. Or any of those things. Amen. We all take the small thing, amen, that God gives us. Amen. If we got just a little bit of faith, amen, we'll have enough to move a devil out of his way. Amen. I know that sometimes when you get tested, amen, you think, well, I've, I had two or three things that come against me, and now then I've got six or eight or nine things that's come against me. You just need to keep praying and building your faith and believing, amen, God's going to get you through this. I don't know how many times, uh, listen, we are so short because we accept uh, what the devil, amen, is giving us. I want you to know, I don't accept poverty. I don't accept sickness. 
I don't accept, amen, misery and fear. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to live like that because I don't have to live like that. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now, we see people that writes books. We see people that makes videos. We see people that spends money to go to conferences, amen, to try to find out what we can do to better ourselves. I tell you what we can do to better ourselves, amen, just believe in what we read. Everybody's wanting some preacher to come through, amen, that'll tell you now, if you get this virgin oil that came from the Holy Land that a uh, born-again Jewish priest has blessed, and somebody else blowed on it a time or two, and Aunt Perny prayed for it, and Uncle Sid uh, carried it around in his pocket for a few days while he's preaching under the anointing, and then put that on you. Then God's going to heal you. Or if you don't want to do that, why well, just send in $100, and I'll send you a prayer cloth, and you'll be healed. Wrong! Don't send me $100 to send you a prayer cloth. Uh, amen. It's the faith you've got in Jesus, uh, amen, that's going to get you healed. I don't mind sending you a prayer cloth, but I don't charge for it. Oh, let me hit a lick on this. I just can't get away from it. I went to one of these conferences. I ain't going to say where because I don't want to pick a fight with somebody. Went to one of these conferences two years ago, and, and it was the last thing I went to uh, there for a while. I don't know if I'll ever go back or not. But anyway, during that conference, uh, amen, they had the preacher, the, the guest preacher stood up there, and he said, I, I, I have went out and bought some prayer cloths, and I've got them up here, and I've anointed them and prayed for them. And the first one, uh, that comes down here with a sick family member that's critically ill, I'm going to give that away. And the others, I'm going to sell for $1,000 each. So far, he, so he gave one of them away, and then he used this big spill, making everybody feel guilty uh, because that, uh, these people, uh, two or three come running down there, and he only had one free one. And after the way I seen him act, I didn't really want him praying over nothing I had anyhow, so it didn't really move me that much. But nevertheless, what I'm trying to say is they was using people as merchandise. Amen. Now, Paul used the handkerchiefs, amen, or cloths, amen, to send into other towns and other cities. I don't think there's anything wrong with mailing one to somebody. If you want the church to pray for you, anoint that cloth in all uh, in the name of the Lord and let the elders of the church pray for that and send it in the mail without you having to give it a donation. I don't see a thing wrong with that. Amen. He would help people. Amen. But what I'm trying to say is uh, people has turned this thing around and people were there that night and they was thinking like, wow, if our church, and he started giving this spiel where people, pastors could give, let their con their, their church uh, uh, put it on their credit card and give a thousand dollars that somebody in their church uh, could have a prayer cloth that's been anointed for healing for a thousand dollar donation. People were coming up there giving $1,000 donations. I was just sitting there shaking my head. Amen. Jesus said, freely you receive, freely you give. Amen. Now, if they wanted to give a donation to help the ministry out, that's one thing is God would lead them. But charging for that kind of stuff is a bunch of baloney. But what I'm saying is it moved them. It intrigued them. It inspired them. It touched them. But I guarantee you they weren't going to get healed just because they gave $1,000. By his stripes, we are healed. Not because of your checkbook. You can't buy healing. You can't buy salvation. You can't can't buy deliverance. You can't buy a relationship with Jesus. It's free. Paid for it, Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord, all through his word, was just simply trying to teach us just to believe. Just bring your problem, bring your care, and believe that something's going to happen, and I'm going to release into you favor and healing, salvation, or deliverance. And people are sitting in churches, amen, that are physically sick, they're financially broken, amen, they've not learned about paying tithes, they've not learned about rebuking, amen, the enemy, they've not learned about uh, abandoning, amen, the spirit, amen, that's in the workplace where you're at, amen, so that it will not, amen, grow and get worse. And you know what we do? 
I didn't mean to get into this today, but I feel the Lord telling me to do this. You know what we do? We come from the church. Y'all pray for me. I'll find me a better job. Why don't you take authority over that in the name of Jesus uh, and bind that spirit? I'm not telling you to get up in front of everybody and make a spew and make a show, but you can wait till they leave or, or come in before they get there and pray for their desk, uh, their machine, uh, amen, whatever it is that they're doing, and bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you what will happen. There will be something happen before long, or they can... Uh, or the Lord will move them out, amen, and transfer them to a different place, uh, or they'll lose their job, one or the other. And you can just bind that spirit in the name of Jesus, uh, amen, come back to church and shout the praises of God. But many times, uh, amen, we're sick uh, and we're weakly, amen, and we're broken down, amen, because we sit back uh, and let the devil bulldoze over the top of us, uh, amen, and intimidate us. Uh, and the same thing over your home. If you got a husband, amen, that throws a fit every time you go to church, uh, you need to bind that spirit uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, amen. Put a prayer cloth under his pillow. You need to pray for that rascal. Uh, amen. That God would bring him down and you need to give a report to the devil. Amen. I'm not going to back up. Uh, I'm going to believe and I bind that spirit. The word of God says, uh, amen, whatsoever you bind uh, on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever's loose on earth uh, shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, amen. We need to bind those things uh, instead of sitting back uh, and whining over the things. Uh, Amen, that's about to tear us up, giving us problems, about to tear us down, amen, about to destroy us. I don't know how many people have said, well, this child of mine's getting on my nerves. Spank him and bind that spirit in the name of Jesus and hug them and love them and tell them how much Jesus loved them. It'll help them. That husband, amen, that, 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 that don't like you going to church, just love him, pray for him, and bind him in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you what the Word of God will do. The Word of God will get him in or it will get him out. Amen. It will either get him closer to God or it will release you from that and send you somebody full of the Holy Ghost. And I know that ain't what you're wanting. Amen. And that's not what I'm wanting you to have. I want him to get saved. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. There are just some people like Judas is carried. They just ain't never going to get saved. Amen. They're just going to wind up repenting in the flesh, beating themselves up, and going down the tube. Amen. But God, amen, will give you the authority to bind the spirits that's in your house and get rid of them things in the name of Jesus. We need to start binding some things. We need to start coming against some things. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we need to start taking authority. I'm not saying get up in your husband's face and fight him. That's not what I'm saying. You need to bind the spirit that's in your husband. Now, he don't even know it's in there. Your wife don't even know that spirit is in her or whoever it is, that person, I, amen, that you work with. I'm going to go ahead and say this. There's a friend of mine put this post on Facebook last week and said all of you that are posting uh, things on Facebook that's got uh, a bad and rude language in it, would you please unfriend me? And I sent her back a text, or not a text, but a, I sent her back a post. And I said, you're probably going to have to unfriend them yourself because those people that will do things like that don't even realize uh, that what they're putting on there is offensive to other people. Amen. There's people today cusses every time they open their mouth. The ones they go to church with cusses every time they open their mouth. Uh, amen. They, uh, they're around people uh, that they work with. They turn on the television uh, and they just carry on the same conversation that they're hearing around the people that they're around. They don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, and they think that people expect them, uh, amen, to use foul language uh, in order to be accepted. But I want you to know today you can accept me or not accept me. I ain't going to put up with a mess, uh, and I ain't going to play with you. Amen. I'm not going to Amen. hang around you very much. I'm not going to put up with it. I'll unfriend you so fast your head will spin. Amen. For two hours uh, after I get you off, I'm not going to fool with a mess. Uh, amen. We need to stand uh, against some things. And I don't know who got this uh, thing in their head that to be a good Christian, amen, you have to be a doormat for somebody to rub their feet on the top of. Uh, every time that you want to rub their feet, I know we have to turn the other cheek. We have to put up with some persecution sometimes. Amen. But you don't have to be a partaker of sin. Amen. Just so they can have their way. We need to buck up against some things uh, and say, hey, look, I, I live in this house. I'm not going to put up with that. Devil, you ain't going to put up with that. I ain't going to put up with you. I bind that in the name of Jesus, uh, and they're going to feel the peace of God that's going to convict their heart uh, when they walk through the door, or they'll get so miserable. Uh, amen. They'll either have to come to Jesus or leave. That's what we need to do. 
That's what we need to believe. That's why we need to call upon the name of the Lord. People want to see this big work. Amen. Let me spend $1,000 to get a prayer cloth, and I know by me making that big a sacrifice that something good's going to happen. Where did you get that theology? Well, I got it out of the book, Antlers in a Treetop. But you got to realize it was Bruce the Moose who wrote it. <laughs> Amen. You need to be getting what you're getting out of the Word of God. Amen. <laughs> well, Jimmy, you are enough, but I'm screwed on the right boat. Let's get into the Word. I don't know where I read any of this or not, but if I didn't, I'll read it again. And I don't know how far I got. Let's just, uh, where did I stop at? We ready for Second Peter? No, I don't got it all read, hadn't I? Let's go back to Acts 2, 21. It says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever prays, amen, shall receive if we believe. Now let's go back also to this one verse here in uh, uh, John uh, chapter number 6 and verse number 37. It says... All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So God's not going to cast us out if we'll have faith enough to come to him, if we'll bring that thing and have faith and believe. Building our faith, understanding that with everything within us, uh, that I'm not coming on a dry run. I'm coming to receive something from the Lord. Well, Brother Jimmy, I'm not worthy to receive. The Lord said, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. I just read to you in the Word just a few minutes ago, amen, where the Lord said that he that, uh, that I am the bread of life, uh, and, and those that believes in me shall never hunger, and they'll never thirst. Jesus is the bread of life. I'm going to go back and read uh, some of this again. In verse number 30 says, in, in uh, John chapter 6, They said, Therefore unto him, What sign uh, showest thou then that we may see and believe? What doest thou work? What kind of work can you do to really pick up my faith? Cause me to believe. Now Jesus did a lot of things with signs and wonders. But if you're waiting for God to send you a sign, and to do a wonder in your life, he may not send one. He may cause you to just try to believe through the faith that you have, amen, with no bells or uh, ringing, no whistles or blowing, amen, nobody reading the scripture, no angel coming with a scroll, amen, out of heaven, amen, giving you the word. On June 3rd, 2015 at 9.45 a.m. The ground shall quake and the birds shall gather all around the windows and sing and the angel will appear in your bedroom and you're going to feel better. Hallelujah. That's probably not going to happen. Amen. You're just going to have to believe. Amen. Without a sign and without a miracle. Amen. Jesus was saying, they said, our fathers were in the wilderness. God sent them a manna from heaven and they ate that bread. They're dead now. He said, but I'm the bread. I'm the bread that God gave. Moses didn't give you that bread. It was God that sent the bread. What they were talking about was the manna that came from heaven. Every morning when they woke up, there was fresh manna on the ground, and all they had to do is get their baskets and go out there and pick up the fresh manna from on top of the ground. They had to eat that, take it to the shade, and keep it all day long because after the sun was up for a few hours, it began to stink, began to rot. It wasn't good to eat anymore. The next morning, uh, the Lord would send fresh manna right on top of the ground, and all they had to do was just go and uh, pick it up again and eat. That teaches us we need our daily bread, not the bread that we got 40 years ago. We need daily bread. What is the bread? Jesus is the bread. He's the bread of life. He's the bread, amen, that, that feeds us, amen, that keeps us from getting hungry. He sustains us. He helps us with every situation, amen. We need to keep ourselves, amen, in contact with God. We need to feed ourselves. Now, let me say, say this to you. Now, God sent them the manna that came from heaven, but they still had to get out with a basket and go pick it up. They couldn't lay down amen, across the bed with a remote control and say, feed me, or wife, pack it to me, or, or cut a pinch off a piece of this and put it in my mouth. Amen? They had to do their part. But God supplied that need of fresh 
need every or fresh bread for every need on a daily basis. So no matter what it is, amen, that comes against you, amen, you're going to have power enough, amen, to overcome that, amen, you're going to have power and victory enough, amen, to make it through it so that you don't get down and don't get out. I don't know how many people that I've talked to lately, amen, it's going through things. Some of you that's, uh, that don't realize what's going on, I'm going to tell you where we're at right now and, and, and within the um, the revelation of the word of God and within the times. We are in the falling away. The word plainly tells us the end shall not come unless there first be a falling away. When there's a falling away, everything in society gets turned upside down. Did you ever see such a mess, uh, amen, that's in our political arena today? It makes me sick. Amen, I don't want the ones that's in there and don't look like none of them uh, that's running. So far, I'm, I ain't too crazy about none of them either. Amen, because I can't none of them so far tell the truth or tell all the truth. It's just a mess. Why is it like that? It's because society's like that. Uh, amen. They wouldn't got an office. Amen. Unless y'all put them in there. Sorry, I'm not going to take the blame for that because I didn't vote for them. Amen. I won't get into all that because I don't want to make somebody mad. But now listen, folks, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, amen. The world is in a mess right now. And the reason why the world is in a mess is because the church uh, has fell away, amen, from the Word of God, fell away from morals, uh, from gospel teachings, uh, fell away from the faith that you have. Amen. That Jesus is not my, just my Savior. He's my deliverer. He's my friend. Uh, he's my king. Uh, he's the Lord of Lords. Uh, Amen. And the Prince of Peace. He's the everlasting Father. He's there for every need that we have. And when the church starts substituting, amen, the things that we can get from God for artificial things, amen, that's why, amen, we get in trouble. There's people today, amen, that is substituting, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, from going to the doctor and getting some antidepressants. Boy, I know that'll probably heat up the tubes. Uh, amen, on the television, just pour some water on them. No, you better not do that. You'll ruin your television. Just leave it alone. It'll cool off in a little bit. Listen to me for just a minute, folks. Uh, amen, a lot of people today have substituted uh, the reading of the Word of God, amen, for movies. Uh, amen, they've substituted the reading of the Word of God, amen, for videos. Uh, they substituted the reading of the Word of God, amen, for the easiness uh, of turning on the television, uh, letting the preacher tell you how to get to heaven, let him give you a thrill and a chill, uh, Amen, and an excitement, uh, amen, over what he's preaching and teaching uh, to where we want to be entertained and motivated. Uh, amen, we'll send money when we like the sermon and hold back when we don't. Amen, the truth is the truth. Uh, we need all of the word of God, uh, and we need, uh, amen, to be moved, uh, amen, by his power and not moved uh, by the artificial things. Uh, amen, there's people today, amen, they'll run to every doctor in the country, but I will guarantee you they ain't never went out to the hen house or out to the barn and fell on their knees and asked God for healing. They've never went to the bathroom uh, and locked the door and said, in the name of Jesus, uh, I pray against the spirit uh, of infirmity. I bind it. In the name of Jesus, uh, where I live or where I die is in the hands of God. Lord, I commit my sickness to you. But it's easier, amen, to rely on Obamacare. It's easier to rely, amen, on, uh, uh, on Blue Cross and Blue Shield or Humana, amen, on some kind of insurance company. Put their faith and trust in a doctor, uh, amen, instead of that. You know what I hear the most of people doing today? There's more people that goes to church uh, and claims to have faith, amen. 80% of their conversations uh, is talking about what doctor they like, uh, amen, and how much time that doctor spends with them. They don't talk about, I went into my bathroom to pray, and I lost myself. I come to myself two hours later speaking in tongues, uh, praising God, uh, and when I got up out of the floor, my disease was healed. You don't hear them talking about that. You hear them talking about I got a $200 deductible. I can go to Walmart and get a $4 prescription filled. Uh, I can, uh, this is a way I can get through those things. I'm not telling you not to go to the doctor. I'm not telling you to fire your physician. I, I'm just telling you, amen, along with your physician, you better go to the great physician. Uh, and that we could be bragging on what Jesus done instead of all the replacements uh, to replace the faith uh, that we should be having. Uh, and faith again, I know I've done said this a dozen times. I'll say it again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by laying out of church. No, no, wait a minute. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by watching television. He didn't say that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by uh, reading the post on Facebook. 
Wrong. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by playing video games. Wrong. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by watching YouTube. Wrong. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, not Antlers in a Treetop by Bruce and Moose. Amen. Not a book by Jimmy Wilson or John Hagee or whoever it might be, even though some of those are good. I tell you, the best one is the Word of God, and we're always looking for a new remedy, a new thing that we can put our faith in, we can put our money in, amen, something new, amen, that we can come up with, uh, or a new evangelist uh, that just come from Walla Walla, Washington, uh, or a new evangelist that came, amen, from uh, wherever, Kalamazoo, Michigan, or Scottsville, Kentucky, or wherever they might have come from, because I'm going to get him to lay hands on me, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, did you know you got the same authority and the same power? I know God's got people that are anointed to pray for the sick. I understand that. And I know there's people that's got that special gift. I understand that. And there's nothing wrong with going and getting them to pray for you. I'm all for that. But what I'm trying to say is a lot of this stuff we can take care of, amen, in the bathroom at the house, in the bedroom, in your office with the door shut, out behind the chicken house, uh, amen, out in the corn crib or whatever it is, you've got a place, uh, amen, to pray, amen, where you can get along with the Lord. Can I tell you what some folks do? Amen, they spend about 10 seconds in prayer, amen, and about 40 hours a week on the television. Amen, you kids need to sit down back there and sit still. This is a house of God. Amen. Need to have respect in the house of God. Brother Jimmy, you make people mad. That's all right. They'll get over it. Amen. We need to learn, uh, amen, to behave ourselves. I didn't let my kids do it. I ain't going to let yours do it either. Y'all excuse me a minute. Amen, Pastor. Glory to God. Thank God you've got the guts to get up and preach it. Amen, brother. It's time. We set the house of God in order. Hallelujah, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you, Brother Jimmy. I appreciate your support. You're welcome anytime. Amen. That's what we need. Uh, amen. Today, that's why our churches uh, are in the shape that they're in today. That's the reason why we're sick. Uh, that's the reason why, amen, that we're, we're, we're sitting over the corner, amen, dried up, uh, amen, like a powder keg, uh, amen, our lips sticking out. Uh, amen. Can I tell you this? Half the moods that people get in could be took care of if they got half the spirits out of them, amen, that's bothering them. Amen. Because some of them moods, uh, amen, is the spirit. Well, I don't like nothing. I don't like you, and I don't like nobody. You know what? The devil on either. Hey Amen. You got that same attitude from him. Hey Amen. So you won't know how to get rid of that. Don't try to get rid of me. You need to get rid of who lives inside of you. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. That'll make you feel better. Hey Amen. If it has anything to do with authority, you get offended. If it has anything to do with anybody straightening anybody out, you're too harsh. Hey Amen. Listen, people today are so finicky. It, it, it just blows my mind. I get to watch this stuff on news sometimes, and it shows people that, that the rants and raves and uh, goes against something, and they'll turn right back around when somebody gets gets up and says, if I get voted in office, I'm not going to allow that. Then they attack him for being too harsh in what he said. Oh, I said, a bunch of nuts. Amen. That's where society is today. They got, you'd be, oh man, I don't make half the country mad today. You'd be surprised that the people's got at least three demons living inside of them and they ain't got a clue. Amen. Them demons don't say, hey, I want you to know I'm inside of you and I'm controlling you. No, they just slip inside of you and say, there ain't nothing wrong with you. And when you start getting around the Word of God or somebody starts challenging you about the spirit that's inside of you, that spirit of rebellion, amen, that spirit of anger, that spirit of frustration, that spirit of being offended, uh, every time somebody looks at you cross-eyed, amen, I'm going to tell you something. If every time you say hi to somebody, you have to go to the bathroom and cry for 10 minutes because they didn't smile, you got a demon inside of you. Sorry. That's just all I'm going to say, amen, about the situation. You need to get over that. Amen. You need to pray for God to strengthen you. Amen. Listen, we need to let God, uh, amen, help us. Uh, amen. Because them little demons is going to say, shh, ain't nothing wrong with you. It's the preacher that's wrong. You don't have a demon. you got a demon inside of you telling you you don't have a demon inside of you. It's the word of God that's wrong. Amen. And you got a demon inside of you telling you you don't have the spirit of anger that you need. No, there's no anger demon inside of you. Huh? It's all it's everybody you see are all idiots. <laughs> it's all their fault. They ain't nobody got no sense no more. They ain't no wonder why I want to slap everybody's head off because everybody's nuts. 
Could be that you've got something inside of you, amen, that you need to get out of you, amen. I'm, talk, I'm not talking about being possessed with your mouth of foaming and your head turning around in circles. Uh, Hollywood gets a hold of this stuff and blows everything out of proportion. I'm just talking about attitudes, uh, amen, that we have sometimes. Uh, we need to get those spirits up. I'm not saying you're possessed. Uh, I'm saying you're oppressed, uh, amen, by some of those spirits, uh, amen, that are controlling you and causing you to be unhappy all the time. But Jimmy, you have those spirits attack you? Why, of course I do. Absolutely. Every time I preach a message, uh, amen, one of them will jump up on my shoulder, uh, amen, whisper in my ear, you made the biggest mess. You need to take that off the air before it ever gets out and gets played anywhere. Why, if you couldn't do no better preaching than that, I'd say at home, I'm a devil. I can do better than that. That's what he tells me every time. Amen. And you know what? Every time I get ready to think, and you know probably what I ought to do, you just take that off the air. That'll be the ones that people calls in and says, you don't know how he touched me. You preached my entire life right in front of me. What an anointing that you had. And the devil tried to tell me, you made the biggest mess. You ought to take it off the air. You're nothing but a failure, and you're nothing but a flop. Amen. Those devils and demonic spirits wants to come, amen, and to attack you, amen, because of your weaknesses, your infirmities, Amen. We need to stand up. Amen. Take authority over those things and rebuke it in the name of Jesus and just tell the devil, I'm not going to have it. You need to get over it because I'm getting ready to get over you. Amen. And we need to hold up our head and we need to press onward. But Jimmy, what if I do that and things get worse? You just need to rebuke it a little harder. Amen. This is spiritual warfare. And amen. If you're going to have spiritual warfare, you're going to have to fight. Amen. With the word of God. Amen. Against the spirits. Amen. That's rising up. Amen. Against you. Amen. You'd be surprised the people that's let the devil come in and take over. Can I go ahead and hit a lick or two on this? Man, I didn't mean to get into this, but this is the way that the Lord is leading me to go. There's a lot of ministers. There's a lot of deacons. There's a lot of good old grandmas, uh, people that's been in church for years. Uh, amen. You didn't let your kids get by with some things, uh, but the grandkids is bringing whiskey and putting it in the refrigerator at the house. Uh, amen. Your children and grandchildren are uh, bringing beer and put it in the house. Uh, you know what you're doing? You're singing, oh, how I love Jesus with the gateway to hell in my refrigerator. Oh, how I love Jesus, Budweiser and Michelob in the fridge. Amen. Because you don't take authority. Amen. Listen over your home and rebuke that stuff. Amen. Listen to the people. Let things come into the home and they back up and they let the kids. Amen. Watch things on television and the grandkids have a remote control. I make my grandkids nervous, amen, because they know I'll take the thing away from them. I'll take it off that mess. They ain't going to watch that mess, amen. That's all there is to it. It's not allowed in my house. And when they come and spend the night, amen, they're not going to sit up to 3 o'clock in the morning, amen, with free reign uh, to the remote control. I can tell you that right now. When Pa goes to bed, you go to bed too. Well, I ain't sleepy. I said, lay it real still. You will be in a little bit. No, I'm going to throw a fit. I'm going to whip you, and then you'll go to sleep. It won't take but a few minutes. Amen. Get them broke. Spank them real good. Tell them, shut that mouth. You get by. Well, this one lets me. And that lets me. Well, that's fine. You go to their house and do it. But you ain't going to do it here. I mean what I'm telling you. You ain't going to get free reign. Amen. To all the stuff that comes out of hell that's funneled through Hollywood right into the living room. Amen. While the parents is asleep. Amen. And the grandparents. Amen. Is asleep. And when they got their mind. Amen. They let the kids. Amen. Be in the bedroom with free rain to a remote control, amen, while they're watching uh, Bill O'Reilly, amen, they're watching some kind of mess, uh, amen, with people fanning the sheets like a bunch of dogs in heat uh, in the bedroom at 13 years old. Woo! Man, I know that's kind of hot preaching, but it's the truth today. Simply because they let demonic spirits come into the house, uh, amen, they let demonic spirits control them, uh, oppress them, uh, amen, into being afraid and full of fear and being intimidated. I don't know how many grandparents today, amen, has got so much jealousy inside of them. You're scared to death, uh, amen, that the grandkids is going to like uh, the grandparents on the other side of the family more than they love you, and you've got to let them have their way in order to earn that love. Amen. I bust their bottom and send them home. Amen. Hug them when they come back. Amen. If they don't want to come, they can go to somebody else's house. Amen. I love them. They want nothing. They ever do ever keep me from loving them. Amen. But if I have to let them sin, and if I have to go along with their sins and their treachery in order to win their love, then I won't win it. 
That's just all there is to it. Amen. That's the reason why you got kids today turning 21, amen, in the penitentiary doing life without parole. Amen. It's simply because, amen, people won't set their house in order. They'll go to church. They'll sing, oh, how I love Jesus. And they let demonic spirits oppress them, amen, and intimidate them. And they walk in fear. And they walk in anxiety. And they're under stress. And they just let every emotion and every mood, amen, control them. And you got some folks today that are scared to death. Death, amen, that they've got to make everybody happy, amen, or the world's not going to go along around. And I'm going to tell you, I have that old spirit jump on me every now and then. You would think, Brother Jimmy, the way you preach and the way you act, it acts like you don't care where anybody likes you or not. I can't help it because I tell you the truth for you not liking me. But I want everybody to love me. I don't ever want anybody to be hurt at me. I don't ever want anybody to be mad at me. Uh, there's times I toss and turn in the bed at night and can't sleep because I'm afraid somebody is offended in me. I don't ever want to hurt your feelings or to do you wrong. But I'd rather hurt your feelings on this side than to have you chase me over hell, amen, trying to t uh, tell me why did you tell me the truth uh, and hurt my feelings it's because both of us could have been in heaven. Amen. Amen. And see, that's where we're at today. Those intimidating spirits, uh, amen, we need to go to the altar sometimes, uh, amen, and unload those things, uh, amen, that's trying to control us. Uh, I want you to know today that my God uh, determines uh, my salvation. Uh, my God, uh, amen, determines uh, my victory. My God uh, determines uh, my happiness. Uh, and my God, uh, amen, determines, uh, amen, everything I go through with uh, and the joy of the Lord that I have in my heart and in my life. Uh, and I'm going to depend on him, a bunch of little old smart aleck spirits. Uh, it's not going to lead me around like a bull ring and a nose of a big bull, amen, and make me do whatever they want me to do, amen, and not have joy in life. Whoo I done worked up a sweat today. Amen. And sometimes you got to work up a sweat, amen, in order to realize, hey, I need to, to address some issues in my life. I need to quit getting mad at the preacher and flipping channels every time it ain't something that I like. I don't need to just bind up my checkbook because I get mad at the preacher. Amen. He preaches on what I'm doing. I, I won't give anything. He preaches something that makes me shout, and I'll pour the money in his pocket. Amen. It ought to be right the verse, uh, uh, right opposite of that. Amen. You ought to give. Amen. When he takes the hide off, pours the salt in, leads you to the altar, and says, now let's unload about a wagon load of them spirits. Amen. That's enticing you and intimidating you and got you held back. And I say this, in the modern day church today, there's enough power, there's enough victory that every believer uh, could be able to shout, stand on their feet, and praise God. But there's enough intimidating spirits out there wonder what they think about you. They think that you have lost your mind. Oh, you don't want to get out of the spirit. No, that could hinder the preacher if he thought you were happy. <laughs> How would that hinder the preacher if he thought you were happy? Listen, it always motivates me to see you sitting there like this. Then like this. <laughs> Amen. There's some folks today that look like they've been baptized in dill pickle juice, and it's done firm in it. Amen. <laughs> Why? Because they know there's things are dealing with them. They got spirits that they're dealing with. They don't. Uh, they wouldn't want to get up in front of the church and say, "I believe I've got about six in me that I want you to pray for me." And see, you don't see people casting out spirits. Oh man, I didn't mean to get in this. You don't see people casting out spirits in church like you used to. You know why? People's happy to carry them. Why would you want to get rid of something that you like being in there? You know why people today won't come to Jesus? It's not because they don't love him. It's not because they don't appreciate what he done, what he done on the cross for them. It's just simply because they don't want to give up their life of sin. Amen. They, do, they don't want to admit that I need Jesus and I'm going to give up all this stuff. And they don't realize the devil's got them blinded. When you get rid of all them spirits and everything's controlling you and you give your heart to the Lord, you're in a brand new world and everything is better than it's ever been before. Amen. And for now, for the very first time, you feel alive. Amen. You feel lightened. You feel strengthened. You feel loved. You're not lonely anymore. The joy of the Lord is all over you. You got new friends and you look back to what you were doing and thinking, why in the world would I have ever done the things that I've done, how silly that I was, how blinded that I was, but today they don't want to come and get rid of those spirits, amen, because that spirit says, oh, it's not that bad. 
I done been here so long, you got used to me. We're old friends. You don't want to get rid of me. Well, I get up with you in the morning, go to work with you, and I go to bed with you at night, and I'm there with you all day long. You wouldn't know how to feel if you got up tomorrow and you wasn't suicidal. You wouldn't know how to feel if you got up tomorrow singing, When the roll is cold up yonder, I'll be there. Woo! Hey Amen. You wouldn't know what to, how to feel if you got up tomorrow and said, Where is he? Where's he at? I don't feel ugly like I did yesterday. Where's he at? Where's that spirit at? I don't feel doomed and depressed like I did yesterday. Where's that spirit at? I don't want to slap anybody today. I want to hug them and love them and kiss them. I, I want to be there for them. I want to help them. I, I want to encourage somebody. Lord, show me somebody I can be a friend to today. And Lord, help me uh, find somebody that I can be a help to today. Hey Amen. Where did he go to? I don't know where he's at, but thank God and Greyhound, he's gone. Amen. Roy, Roy Clark had a song years ago about his mother-in-law. He said, thank God and Greyhound, she's gone. <laughs> Amen. That's the way you'll be about the devil. Amen. You'll be so glad. Amen. That he's gone because you're rid of him. He's not there anymore. Amen. Those things that's in your head. Amen. That's talking to you and causing you to get down and depressed. You need to get rid of those things. And you know, there's, there's a few people that can go right in the biggest crowd there is around and they'll be lonely. They, they're lonely everywhere they go. Friends will try to connect with them. They can't connect with the friends. You know why? There's a spirit of depression saying, I'm your friend. <laughs> Me and you just slip over here in the corner and while everybody else is singing and dancing. We'll sit here and think about all the things that's wrong. And I'm going to tell you all the things that's going wrong and I'm going to make you cry and feel sorry for yourself and I'm going to pat you on the back. I love you. You don't want to get rid of me. You don't really want to get rid of me. What would you do tomorrow? I wouldn't be in your head talking to you. Why would you want to get rid of me? And there's why there's people sitting right in the house of God, a man of God anointing with a bottle of oil that knows how to, uh, to, to cast them spirits out. Amen. you got an altar and, and you've been taught, amen, how to get rid of those things. But see, we're asking the Lord, Lord, you send me a sign. You raise Elvis Presley from the dead and let him come and sing and I'll give my heart to the Lord. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Well, Lord, if you let my mother get killed with cancer, I'll give my heart to you. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You don't plea, uh, plea bargain with Jesus. He gave you the plan of salvation. You can believe, accept him, accept the plan of salvation just like it is. Uh, amen. You'll be lost and without God. That's all there is to it. He's not going to uh, ease up your bed of roses or your bed of thorns. Uh, amen. And put roses in there. Amen. Just because he thinks I've got to do something to win you over. Amen. Listen, he's done gave you heaven. He's done gave you the plan of salvation if you'd come and surrender your heart to him. He's done. He's gave his life. Amen. By his stripes uh, we are healed. Uh, amen. But we are bruised because of his iniquities. Amen. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. Amen. Listen. He's done, done all that he can do. Amen. To set you free from your sins and to give you a place in heaven. He's not going to bend. He's not going to back up. He's not going to change his deal. Amen. Listen, folks. If you go up here to McDonald's tomorrow and tell him I want a Happy Meal, I don't know how much a Happy Meal is, or a, or a Big Mac meal, I don't even know how much that is. Let's just say $6. I don't know how much it is. For a, for a Happy for a, a combo. And you go up there and say, I'll tell you what I'll do. I've had a rough week for three seventy five. I'll take your, take your combo for you. They're going to look at you and say, for $6, we'll let you have it. i tell you what. Why don't we both just kind of bend a little bit? A good business deal is really good when both parties are happy. You bend a little and I'll bend a little. I'll give you $4 for that, for that combo. They're going to say, won't you move on through the drive through I got somebody back here who's got some sense. Because I asked $6, you ain't getting it without $6. I don't want to hear you sob stories. I don't want to hear you trying to chew me down. I don't want to hear you trying to, uh, to, uh, to cause me to uh, lower my price. I don't want to hear that mess. What I want to hear is you got $6. I got a combo. We've got an agreement. You're going to go their way. Amen. You're not going to chew them down. If you're going to make it into heaven, you're going to have to go God's way. Amen.
Now, that's an old expression, amen, that we've heard uh, down through the years. That, that's probably not a good expression to use. What it means is to lower the price is what it means. No offense to the Jews was meant. That way it all don't nobody. If you take offense, you need to get that demon out of you because it's causing you because I sure didn't mean anything by it. Brother Jimmy, you plain, ain't you? You right. You right. I'm plain and straightforward. Did you notice that right now in America that everybody's upset over something? and everybody's offended over something, and the ones that's not offended is offended because they can't find nothing to get offended over. And people don't like this, they don't like that, they don't like something else, and you see that in church. This one don't like going to church there because the songs is not like what they like. That one over there don't like it because the ceiling fans is on sometimes and it stops them up. Somebody else don't like it because the restrooms is not the way that they like it. They got metal uh, restroom doors, and they, they like the plastic ones. They're not as noisy. And then there'll be others that's got kids there, and they don't like kids. And there'll be others that's, I could just go on and on. And then there's some has got that sister that sits in front of you with a big hat and got a feather in the back of it, and you can't see the preacher for that feather. Brother Jimmy, surely there ain't nobody that cuckoo. Honey, I could write you a book that thick of cuckoos that I have known over the years. And all it boils down to is having little demons inside of them, little spirits, little opinions, little offensive things, little time bombs ready to go off. And when you give the opportunity to get rid of them, it's like, no, <clears throat> I've been coming to church here for five years. I brought them with me every time, and I've been able to survive, and I don't know what it'd feel like not to have them. I'm not going to do anything about it because I don't like change. And I don't want the Lord to get all over me. I can't see myself acting like Jimmy Wilson acts when the Spirit gets on him. You don't have to act like I do when the Spirit gets on you. Can I go ahead and say this? A pastor friend of mine told me this true story. <clears throat> he said he was going to revival and there was people praying around the altar getting filled with the Spirit and this man was going with him, if the way I understood it, every night. He said he told him, he said, you know what? I ain't about to get up there around that altar and flop in the floor like a fish and cry and speak in tongues and waller around. He said, I, they, I ain't about to do like that. He said, about two nights later in that revival, he looked over there, and there the old boy was over there on the altar. He said, well, but just a few minutes, he went to jumping around. Next thing you know, he went to speaking in tongues. Next thing you know, he's laying out on the floor. Amen. See, sometimes when we say, this is not what I'm going to do, this is, I'm not going to act that way, you know what you'll do? You'll wind up having to do that very thing. But see, the